Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See detail. Have you ever wondered what it's like to bite into nerds gummy clusters? They're fruity. They're tangy. They're gummy. And they're crunchy. Nerds Gummy Clusters, a union of fruity sweet gummy and tangy crunchy nerds. Unleash your senses. Shop now at nerdscandy.com. The screen is still top to bottom with back and forth warm conversations. She points. Good morning, guys. Welcome to the podcast. I've got a fantastic guest for you today, Wayne Mullins, coming out of Louisiana. And he's trained more than 20,000 marketers, launched New York Times bestsellers, and helped a client grow in less than five years. I'm really happy to have him on to talk about his work. And his he's the founder of Ugly Mug Marketing and creator of the Freelance Accelerator and author of Full Circle Marketing, which will talk about. And I love having out-of-the-box thinkers on my show and really happy to have him contribute to the conversation. So Wayne, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm excited for our chat today. Yeah. I really love entrepreneurs such as yourself and start off by introducing yourself, what you do, how you got there. And I'm excited to dive into the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So I am a father of four amazing kids. My wife and I have four wonderful kids ages 17 down to 11 years old. So they're in those adolescent years, which means lots of activities, lots of running around and keeping up with them. Outside of that, I have a marketing agency, a, I would call it maybe a boutique agency, but a boutique agency that is really known for one thing. And that one thing is results. So that's just a super high, quick level, quick overview of me. Yeah. Interesting. And we talk about, you talk about your marketing philosophy and your, you wrote a book called Full Circle. What are the four principles behind Full Circle marketing? How do they apply to modern entrepreneurs looking to scale their businesses? Yeah. What I would say is that we live in a world where there's a new marketing thing, platform, idea, strategy born every other day. So there's so many things vying for our attention and pulling us and saying, this is what you should be doing with your marketing. And what I've discovered over these last 15 years of growing this agency and doing marketing even before that is this, that most people think they're being strategic with their marketing, when in reality, all they're doing is they're grabbing various tactics and throwing various tactics together into a bag, if you will, shaking the bag up, dumping things out of the bag, and then wondering why it's not working, why they're not happy with the result. So at its core, the book is really about this one idea that you have to be strategic. And in the book, I go into some core strategies that every marketer, every entrepreneur needs to have in place. And what's so amazing about this is at the end of the day, marketing really boils down to two core ingredients, human psychology and math. That is it. Focus on those two things, understand those two things, and everything else gets easier. Yeah, I love that. And I'm a marketer at heart as well. A lot of people say the two core is marketing and sales. The the other kind of question I have from you is you said marketing is evolving and changing. What do you mean by that? And highlight how it's evolving in today's society with AI. Sure. So marketing is always changing and always evolving. But the fascinating thing is that human psychology, the way that human beings make decisions hasn't really changed that much in the last few hundred years. At its fundamental levels, people still make decisions pretty much the same way. Now, they may be getting their information. They may be influenced in different ways to make those decisions. But in terms of the actual decision-making process, it's always been the same. And the simple formula for that is simply this, that number one, People have to know about you. They have to know about your product, your service, your business, your brand. That's step number one. 
Number two, they actually have to like what you do. They have to at least start with this notion or this idea that the product or service you provide is either going to help them solve a problem or help them achieve something, right? Help them fulfill a desire that they have. So those are the fundamental elements to get people to begin thinking about making a purchasing decision. The next step, and this is the crucial one, is trust. They have to believe that they're going to receive more value for the dollars they spend than keeping those dollars, right? So in other words, if I'm going to pull out my wallet and hand you a $100 bill, I have to believe, I have to trust that your product or service is going to be worth more to me than that $100 bill. And the center of that is trust. And so many marketers lose sight of this because we're so busy trying to figure out how do we do Instagram or how do we do TikTok or how do we do whatever that platform is. And we lose sight of these foundational principles. Interesting. And uh, I'm always looking at trends. And one thing that was really interesting was when TikTok came on the scene and all the platforms started to shift to vertical video short form. What percentage of media consumption or advertising is on social media platforms versus conventional TV, radio sources? Yeah, I don't know the exact dollar amounts or percentage amounts exactly. But what I will tell you is that there was an axis where these two things crossed and those two things crossed probably about 10 years ago. That was the beginning of the decline in traditional marketing dollar ad spend. And since that time, probably around 2018, 2019, social media, all those new forms, quote unquote, of media surpassed in annual revenue bringing in from companies, from marketers, et cetera, traditional media. So the trend has already shifted, right? There's more money spent in the new ways of reaching people, the new technologies than in the traditional media formats. And that trend is not showing any signs of going back the other way. So would you, would it be safe to assume that traditional media, especially TV and radio are at peak or they are on the decline? They're on the decline for sure. But what that means for marketers is this, that there are still loyal audiences to those particular forms of media, right? So there are like, I don't watch the news. I don't have cable in my home, but in our marketplace here, there is a significant portion of the marketplace who still watches the local news every single night, whether it's the you know six o'clock news or the 10 o'clock news, there's a loyal percentage of the audience, typically older folks who are going to be watching that. And as more and more money is getting moved over to all these new quote unquote new forms of media, what is so incredibly fascinating is it opens up opportunities for you to really stand out in those other other spaces that used to be so crowded. When I got started in this, newspaper was one of the biggest forms of local advertising. So if you were a local business of any shape or size, the newspaper is where you had to advertise. Now, that's not the case anymore, right? But now it's extremely cheap to run big ads in the newspaper. It's extremely cheap to get your message in front of those same demographic eyeballs that used to be there. They're still there. It's just maybe smaller numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you mentioned newspapers, when blogs came on the scene around 2008, 2009, that's when I started to see the decline of the newspaper. And the other question I have for you is audio is a fast growing segment as well with podcasts and YouTube as well. What percent, like how, if, if I'm a marketer or I'm a bit small business, how can I get in front of that trend and reach new customers or existing customers. Talk about audio. Yeah, absolutely. So what I want to do is I want to talk about audio, but I also want to tie it to video. So when we think about people who are consultants, when we think about people who are B2B or even in some B2C business to consumer situations, we think and we understand how a podcast could be beneficial for them. But if you think about, for example, the local coffee shop right out the window across the street from me, it's really tough to think how could a local coffee shop use a podcast to actually grow their business? And the answer is maybe they couldn't, but what they can do is through their video content, if they have audio associated with that, the baristas talking, explaining how to brew the perfect cup of coffee and showing how to do that, um, that can then be transcribed 
that can then be taken and turned into other forms of content as well. So I think it's important, number one, you're 100% spot on that audio is a huge trend and it's a trend that so many businesses need to pay attention to. But I would also say that the businesses that by nature don't think they can use audio or use video to benefit their business can and should, but it's a matter of learning to take one thing like a video and then repurpose it into multiple formats. So you've got the video, you can then take the transcript, turn that into maybe a blog post or an article or a newsletter. Um, you could then possibly take that and break it into web content or social media content. There's a lot of things you can do, even if you're something like a coffee shop. Yeah, really, yeah, really powerful. And like I said, when I first heard of like podcast was just grow like the first time I heard of it was 2018 at South by Southwest and back still podcast. There were tons of podcasters 10 years before 2018. And that was like when it was starting to catch trend. And another question I have for you is how you've always been known for against the grain thinker. And how has this against the grain thinking really helped you, especially in a post COVID era, especially in a rapidly changing, highly dynamic, disruptive economic marketing? social, political environments. And what I would say is this, that so in our agency, we work with businesses typically. Most of them are for-profit. And what we see over and over again is when they come to us with a quote-unquote marketing problem, right? They need our help with marketing. Usually that is merely symptomatic of other things taking place. And one of the things that we've discovered over the years is this, that when people come to us, when a prospective client comes to us, one of the trigger points that gets them to reach out to us is they see a competitor doing something that they think they should be doing. So maybe their competitor just got a really nice, fancy new website, or maybe their competitor is really putting up some amazing images on Instagram, right? So then they come to us and they begin thinking, wow, we need to catch up with them. And one of the conversations that we have to have is that it doesn't do you any good to be a little better, right? So in other words, yes, could we build a website that's a little better than your competitors? Yes. Could we help you figure out how to style a photo shoot so your images look better than your competitor? Yeah, we could probably do that. But better will never win. What wins is different. And when it comes to thinking out of the box and against the grain, the problem for so many of us is we operate in this world, whatever our business is. So for me, it's the marketing agency. I operate in this world with blinders on to the other things around me that I could grab, could steal, could take. So one quick story is this. When we think of a drive through window, the number one thing that most people think of, they think of fast food, right? You're going to drive through, you're going to pick up some fast food at a drive through window. The reality is that the fast food or the drive through window actually didn't originate in fast food. It originated in a bank. And someone in the fast food industry said, you know what? What if we did the same thing? Now, from a pure like operational perspective, that is a terrible idea. You think about it, right? You're going to try to have somebody order 200 feet behind your building. And by the time they get up to the window, you're going to cook and prepare a meal for them. So from an operational perspective, this is a terrible business idea. But someone was willing to think outside the box. They were willing to go against the grain and figure out how to make this happen. And now the interesting thing is that most fast food chains, you name out any big one that comes to mind, the majority of their revenue today comes from drive through not from in-facility in dining. Yeah, it's amazing because especially after COVID, I realized a lot of restaurants, they shifted from in-dining to now they have takeout and to-go and Uber Eats and DoorDash. And that's actually a significant chunk of revenue. So the companies that uh, pivoted and innovated and embraced technology um, when everything was shut down survived and not, are now thriving. Um, and I really love this idea of uh, you mentioned different because that's the Seth Godin purple cow uh, is be, be different, be a, be a category of one, 
which is interesting. The So talk about your ugly mug marketing's approach and how does it differentiate itself from other agencies? What's the core value you offer to the clients? Yeah, the simple answer to that, and, and it's very cliche, but the answer is results. So when a client comes to us, our prospective client comes to us, we do not force them into long-term contracts. We simply say, give us two months. If at the end of two months, you are not confident that we are heading in the right direction, if you are not confident that we're going to deliver the results that you hope for, that you want and that you need, we don't want your business. We want you to go somewhere else to find someone else who can help you. And that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on us, right? It forces us not to just do the things that we've always done. It forces us to always look for other things that could be working. So if a campaign for someone isn't delivering results, we can't just sit around and say, we, we told you we we're going to do three campaigns. We did three campaigns. Sorry, they didn't work. No, if it takes 10 campaigns, if it takes completely restructuring the way we're doing things, like our mission, the way that we have gotten to the point where our average client lifespan right now is over three years and that number is continually ticking up, it's because of this focus on results. Yeah. And a, a follow-up question for you is the next question. I, and I love this idea, how you, your unique USP, your core value. Next question I have for you is scaling mindset. And for entrepreneurs looking to scale, what mindset shifts or practices do you believe are essential for long-term success? Love this question. And this I could spend all day talking about. So I'm going to make this as concise as possible. But Two things come to mind. Number one, right now, the word skill is like a buzzword in the business world. And here's what I know to be true. Most people do not know the difference between growth and scale. They use those words interchangeably. And there is a vast difference between the two. When most entrepreneurs say they're going to scale, in reality, all they are doing is growing. And here's the difference or the distinction between the two. If you are growing, your organization, as you grow, if you're the leader, if you're the entrepreneur, as you grow, you are going to have less and less time available, right? It's going to, the demands for your time are going to go up as you grow. And the amount of stress that falls back on you as the leader is going to increase along at the same rate as the growth occurs. If you are scaling, it is the inverse of that. If you are indeed scaling, what happens is as your organization gets bigger, the demand on your time actually decrease. Your workload actually decreases and your level of stress actually decreases. You see what happens so often is it's easy to grow for periods of time, right? Until the numbers start getting pretty big, it gets more and more difficult. And what happens is so many times the entrepreneurs do not take the time to build out the systems and processes to ensure that the culture is right so that they can indeed scale. So Scale is not necessarily about a speed or a number. It's about this idea that as the organization continues to get bigger, both that could be in terms of number of people, could be revenue, could be profit, however you want to define that, as it gets bigger, you as the owner do not feel the weight of that growth. It's actually the inverse. You experience more freedom. And that is the big one. I think so many just jump in and they do all these things without taking the time to step back to work own the systems, the processes, and really carefully ensuring that the culture is right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the e-myth working on versus working in. And that's a really crucial skill to have to distinguish when you're working on versus in. What a very interesting conversation and how can people find out more about you, find out your company, work with you, your socials, et cetera. Sure. I would say the simplest place to find more about me is on Instagram at Fire yourself. I share everything from leadership to marketing to behind the scenes and growing an agency. And then in terms of what we do at the agency, it's uglymugmarketing.com. All of the email addresses, phone numbers, all that's in one spot. Mm, I love that. And for the audience, be sure to thank Wayne for coming on and give his socials a like and follow, check out his work and reach out to him. And thanks so much for a very insightful conversation. Thank you so much for the time.